Kushi 07 title, localized in the year of 2020? Wow, this came out of nowhere. However, unlike the last chapter of Higurashi When They Cry, this didn't take 14 years to come out officially in English. Developed by DMM Games and Register, then brought to the West by Shira VN, Iwaihime is a visual novel that takes a few cues from the When They Cry titles, but then carves out an extremely distinct identity with a romance horror hybrid story about sin and retribution. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to know how this goes. Iwaihime stars Suzuma Suzuhara, a young man who is part of a long-standing family tradition where members must strike out on their own and refine their body and mind in perfecting the Suzuhara style of martial arts. However, this style is not made to inflict pain, but instead to give thanks with. It also has the super cool declaration line of Haja Kensho, crush evil and demonstrate the righteous path. Transferring into the Susuda Prefectural High School due to some family drama, Suzumu is told by his childhood friend Subikiko to stay away from one of his classmates, Toei Kurokami, a mysterious and frail girl who is always clutching at a strange doll to her chest, and everyone excludes. Suzumu is not fond of this treatment, so he tries to get closer to her, only to find himself rejected with claims that he was too late and he's corrupt. However, the hero that Suzumu is, he's not gonna let that slide, and decides he's going to save her from whatever her ailments are. Little does he know, he's just wandered headlong into a curse where untold horrors await him. Along the way, he joins the LCSC, a club whose members have been handpicked by an eccentric teacher and consists almost entirely of cute girls who all fall for him. Now, if you think that's weird and feels a bit tonally dissonant from the whole creepy curse thing, you'd be absolutely right. That's the whole modus operandi of Iwahime right there. This visual novel thrives on putting the horror right next to a story filled with every Oroje cliche in the book. We've got the transfer student, the obligatory sidekick dude who serves no other purpose aside from minor comic relief, and everyone else is a cute girl who falls head over heels for Suzumu. This all takes place in a game which has an opening scene of a girl vividly imagining getting crushed by a train. Or should I put it alongside the grotesque Shis King ripping body parts off another girl? Or that giant flesh monster that really likes breaking things? The title is not subtle about the horror. It uses various techniques to keep you putting all the creepy stuff that happened literally five seconds ago on the back burner, so it can punch your stomach with maximum impact repeatedly. Step one for accomplishing this is found within the art direction. Aside from being very nice to look at, it's straddling a fine line that allows it to freely jump comfortably into the scary face territory without changing the art style. This extends to backgrounds, which feature a substantial number of CGs that look appealing, whether they be pristine scenery or fleshy hellscapes. Or both. Character portraits are quite soft and cute and even get environmental shaders to have them fit their locations better. It's a stellar visual style. However, I warn you that some of the more horror-based CGs are actively framed to be reminiscent of sexual violence, which can be disconcerting to some people. There is no R18 patch for this game though, so there is no actual explicit material. The most important part of the art in this game is that the boy himself, Suzumu, has a face. I personally think it is so much easier to step into the shoes of a character who has a defined appearance that is reinforced, no matter how vanilla they actually are. Suzumu has got a set of stunning portraits that the game makes liberal use of, and he's voiced, as you can see from the opening which is something you will see a lot, as the game is broken up into distinct chapters that all carry the suffix hime, which means princess or lady of noble or higher birth. These chapters have comparable pacing to that of the earlier chapters of Higurashi When They Cry, which means they all start off with more slice of life school stories before the horror elements set in the end. Although in Iwahime's case, the chapters are much shorter and jab in the horror much quicker. So after each freakish event happens, you get treated to an opening that heavily plays up all the romance before you move into the next chapter. It's rather amusing since it happens so often. I didn't really enjoy how this game paced itself in the first few hours. I found myself bored during some of the school life segments and disliked how the horror focused mostly on grotesque imagery rather than being legitimately scary. The earlier chapters are paced out and can make them feel like they're 
filled with a lot of artificial padding to just increase their length. However, at just after the halfway mark, the game decides it's had enough dallying and decides it's actually gonna start plotting. And when it does this, you are in for some great storytelling. The length of the previous chapters is there to sort of set a cathartic line. So when the last arcs occur, you can get the maximum enjoyment out of the problems actually being dealt with. After all, this is a good romance too. And Iwahime utilizes its emotional beats to deliver solid gut punches to make you feel both very happy and very sad. The music immensely helps in this regard with several triumphant or tear-jerking tracks that help emphasize just how good that last half is. Iwahime plays the long con with its narrative and convinces readers that it's not the unique horror thriller they were promised. However, that all changes when it shows its hand and you are taken through some gripping story scenarios that will send several chills up your spine. This worked well with the game's presentation, aesthetic, and blend of romance and horror. I couldn't really recommend this more. Rejoice, or should I say Iwai, for Noisy Pixel is giving Iwahime a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching Noisy Pixels Group Data here to bring you guys the best news, reviews, previews, and more. Please stick around, watch the review on the website, and, you know, participate in our giveaways on Twitter because we have those. Also, more importantly, I am an idiot who did not remember to put it in the main review that Iwai means rejoice, so it's just kind of slapped there at the end. The utter tragedy that I could not make a Kamen Rider was joke.